Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Francho Tone and Ann Baxter in Five Graves to Cairo with Otto Preminger, J. Carol Nash, and Fortunio Bonanova. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. All the world loves a lover, and all the world loves a mystery. Tonight, we make everybody doubly happy by combining romance and mystery in Five Graves to Cairo. And we have the same stars who made millions of hearts skip a beat, or perhaps two, with their adventures in that Paramount picture, Francho Tone and Ann Baxter. This week, we borrowed Francho from the cast of the new Paramount hit, True to Life. The studio grapevine has a way of picking up advanced tips on promising pictures, and one branch of that grapevine leads straight into my office. My spies all reported that the team of, of producer Charles Brackett and director Billy Wilder had created a triumph of suspense in Five Graves to Cairo. So we had our bid in for the radio rights before the shooting had even finished. The setting of the play is the Egyptian desert at the high tide of the German advance. And the people are a British soldier, a young French girl, and a rather well-known Nazi general by name, Marshal Erwin Rommel. We invite you to join our hero in matching wits with the Marshal and turn your ingenuity on the strange secret of the five graves in the African sand. We find ingenuity, a well-known American quality, much in use by our fighting men abroad in meeting the problems of everyday living in faraway places. As a prime example, I point to an Air Force sergeant in New Guinea who has sent his mother in Kentucky a snapshot showing his tent with a box of Lux Flakes in a prominent position. He's made a mattress by stuffing a sheet with grass, built a table and chair, and rigged up a washing machine out of a discarded oil drum. And he writes that with Lux Flakes, this unique washing machine beats washing on a board by, quote, two gallons of sweat, unquote. Our thanks to his mother for this late communique from New Guinea. And we turn now to North Africa, as the curtain rises on the first act of Five Graves to Cairo, starring Francho Tone as Corporal Bramble and Anne Baxter as Moose, with Otto Preminger as Marshal Rommel and J. Carol Nash as Farid and Fortunio Bonanova as General Sebastiano. In June of 1942, the British Eighth Army was defeated in Egypt. Tobruk had fallen. The victorious Rommel and his Africa Corps had mounted an offensive that was pounding the British back step by step toward Cairo and the Suez Canal. On the desert, between the British and the German lines, stood the town of Sidi Halfaya, ablaze with heat, which rose in waves from the dead street and the dead buildings. No creature moved, no sound was heard. And then, far across the desert, a figure wove its way through the scorching sand. His uniform hung in tatters from his bruised and bloody body, and yet, he stumbled on, falling, crawling on his hands and knees. From a window in the Empress of Britain Hotel, the native proprietor watched the figure approach the town, watched with wondering, fearful eyes. Moosh! Moosh, look! What is it? He is coming here, a British soldier. Is this divisional headquarters? I said, is this divisional headquarters? No, no, this is hotel, sir. We... I wish to speak to the commanding officer. Quickly, please. But the British have gone, sir. What is the matter with him, Farid? Fever, sunstroke. Listen, the British have gone... Corporal John Bramble reporting, sir. Royal Tank Regiment stationed at Tobruk. You've been in Tobruk, sir? Hottest blister in the devil's heel. We we joined operations last night near Bir Hakim. It looked like a frolic, sir. We thought we had those German tanks on the run. Then... Then the 88th. Their formation split wide open, and there were the 88th right against our bellies, sir. Listen, please. Very clever, this blasted Herr Rommel. 30 shells a minute. Oh, 
Oh, yes, sir. We, we pulled out all right, but the rest of the men in the tank were killed. You ever see a five-passenger hearse, sir, doing the Lambeth Walk? Listen, please. The British are not Seven here dead. anymore. They left. Fitch, yes. dead. Yes, sir, but, but the English... Abbott's dead. No English here, sir. Connor dead. All of them driving themselves to their funeral. That's service, sir. Moosh, Moosh, bring water and salt. He has got to get out of here. Is there transportation back to Tobruk? No, sir, there is no more Tobruk, sir. They've taken Tobruk. Listen, this is the Hotel Empress of Britain in City Al Fire. You oh. must leave. The drummers are on their way here now. Oh, hello, miss. Women at headquarters now? Sir, sir, please. Uh, where's the commanding officer? I was... I was speaking with the commanding officer. No, no sir, please. You must rejoin my outfit. Abbott! Mr. Listen! Step in! The Germans! They are here! Oh, you get... Pitch! Pitch! No! O'Connor! No, do not go out there! The back way! Go out the back! Have to find them! Oh! Mr. Get up! Get up! He's unconscious! Mr. Wake up! Moosh, what can we do? I will hide him behind the desk! Help me! I would not do that, Farid! No? But where else can I put him? Right where he is, in the middle of the floor. Oh, no, no, no. They will see him. They, they'll shoot him. I will drag him behind the desk. Help me, please. He is heavy. I will not help you. Oh, I must hide him. There. Oh, that is better. I would not want them to shoot him. You fool. They will find him. Then he will shoot you, too. Shoot me? Shoot me? Oh, no, no. I've got the hotel. Oh, oh. Salam alaykum. Good afternoon. Perhaps we're a little late for tea. Tea? Well, well you see the cook... Is uh, this a tea time? Huh? Who, oh, please, sir? The Empress of Britain. Oh, I did not name the hotel, Lieutenant. That was the name when, when I bought it, Lieutenant. Let me see. I have some notes here. Your name is Farid. Yes, sir. My name is Farid. You're Egyptian. Oh, yes, yes, sir. But, but only because my parents were Egyptian, sir. Nothing wrong with Egypt. Oh, no, no, nothing, Lieutenant. Except too many English and too many flies. Uh, yes, Lieutenant. We've been killing the English like flies. Later, we will kill the flies like the English. Oh, uh, yes, yes, Lieutenant. You have a native cook by the name of Barry. Carrick, sir. Carrick, yes, sir. But, but he ran away this morning with the British to Alexandria. You have a wife. Oh, yes, 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 sir. But, but she ran away too, sir. With the British to Alexandria? No, no, sir. With a Greek to Casablanca. <laughs> There's a maid of the name of Marie Jacqueline. Oh. Is that you? Yes. They call me Moosh. French citizen born in Marseille. Is that right? Yes. First informed of everything. And there's a waiter here, Alsatian, by the name of Paul Double. Ah, uh, yes, sir, but he was killed, sir. By whom? By you, sir. In the bombing when your planes came over last night. You know your beautiful planes? Let's look. You, Moosh. What is a French maid doing in Egypt? Housework. What is the matter with housework in Paris? In Paris, there are one million French candle maids. There is only one Moosh in Sidi Al Fire. The cook ran away this morning to Alexandria. Why didn't you? What for? He would take Alexandria, he would take Cairo. Absolutely. Cigarette, please. You have some? Yes. Thank you. Write it for me, please. Your hands are small. It's been a long time since I've seen such a small hand. Thank you. You, Farid. Ah, uh, yes, sir. How many rooms in this hotel exactly? Oh, this is the largest hotel, sir, between Alexandria and Benghazi. How many, I said? Uh, Sixteen, sir. Sixteen. Of course, we lost four in the bombardment. The bathroom? Oh, yes, yes, of course, sir. Everything the best. How many? Two. One that worked. Uh, maybe you would like to see the rooms? Uh, come, Lieutenant, come. Full of bedbugs, I'm sure. Oh, yes, yes, sir. Every one of them. Yes, sir, full of bedbugs. We all... Own... Oh, no, no, no. No, sir, we have absolutely no bedbugs. Not one, sir. Never I... mind. Bedbugs broken our bathrooms and all. We're taking over the Empress of Britain as our temporary headquarters. Uh, yes, sir. Oh, great honor. Come upstairs, sir. The room... I expect your fullest cooperation. If there be any irregularities, you will be held responsible. Our complaints are brief... And we make them against the nearest wall. Yes, sir. As though he had to warn us. He's warning you. I'm only a servant here. The rooms immediately adjacent to the good bathroom will be occupied by the German high command. Yes, sir. The one with the bathroom that doesn't work goes to the Italian general. The Italian. <laughs> we'll inspect the rooms now. Oh, good, yes. Miller. Go ahead, Lieutenant. We've had the open. Don't just open. Go ahead, Lieutenant. Oh, uh, maid. Yes? Before I make final arrangements about the quarters upstairs, uh... Which is your room? Way down the hall. 
Next to the one you assigned to the Italian general. Oh. Well, if that worries you, I'm... I'm not uh, afraid of generals. You're not? It's lieutenants I'm afraid of. <laughs> I see. Uh, uh, go, go right up, sir. I will be there at once. All right. We don't have a door waiting. Moosh. The man behind the desk. Take him out of here. Yes. Uh, mister, mister, you... Moosh! He's gone. What? He's gone. Oh, where? Oh, thanks to Allah. Of all the miracles, that was the most miraculous miracle. Shut up. He must have wakened and gone out the back. An unconscious man spirited away. Oh, Allah be praised. Well, he's gone. That's all. He was never here. He had nothing to do with him. If any questions are asked... Listen. They shoot. That oh. is even better. There will be no questions asked. Oh, they found him. Poor fellow. Such a nice fellow. Well, maybe it is for the best. Hurry. Hey, yes, yes, sir. I am getting them. I have them right here in my room, sir. Oh, cigarette, cigarette. Where did I Shut put the door. this? Oh, you. Shut. Quick. Oh, how, how did you get in here? The window. I woke up downstairs behind a desk. I heard a German talking. Yes, they are here now. How did I get to this hotel? Oh, you had a sunstroke. I put you behind the desk. That is all I know. Except they shot you. Oh, they shot an Italian soldier for stealing drinking water. Sir, but... Sir, you cannot stay here. You understand? You cannot. You you have to leave, sir. Please. Yes, of course. Why not ask that German officer to call me a taxi? Sir, please. I found these clothes on the bed. These shoes. Whose are they? Uh, they belong... Listen. Oh, they are here. The general staff. Now they will be all over the hotel, sir, in every corner of every room. Please, sir, get out. Please, quick. I'm sorry. I can't. If the Africa Corps doesn't get me, the desert will. Whose clothes are these I'm wearing? They belong to our waiter, sir. Waiter? Yes, he was killed last night when room 14 blew into the cellar, sir. One of these shoes is bigger than the other. Was he lame? Yes, sir, a crippled foot. What was this waiter's name? Paul Davos. Davos? Yes, sir. Good. He was never killed, understand? Huh? Oh, but, but he was Alsatian. He was older, sir. And I'm Alsatian, and he was my age. Yes. Hand me those shoes. No, please. Moosh. Moosh, he is alive. Then the earth on the outside. Moosh. He wants to stay here at Davos. Tell him he cannot help me. Listen, man, it's only for a few days until the British come back. Until the who come back? The British? That's right, the British. Since when do the British come back? You don't like us. No. And if Harry does not tell the Germans, I will. But I thought you were French. Yes. I had two brothers in the French army. At Dunkirk, when the British decided to evacuate their troops, what did they do with the French? They left them on the beaches. To die or to be captured. Who told you that, Laval? Waving out into the water, begging the boats to come back for them. But did the British come back? Did they? I'm only a chambermaid. If somebody rings for me, I come. It's only a towel they want. Or an extra pillow. Not life. Now, wait. Give me just five seconds before you call the Germans. Five seconds, that's all. What do you want to tell me about? Blood, sweat, and tears. Pencil. Here is pencil. This is the address of my wife in London. Oh, they are ringing from the lobby. The German. I want you to mail this note to her when you can. Yes, sir. But you better get out of those clothes. They will shoot you for a spy. They'll shoot me in my uniform, too. They're thrifty with their drinking water. Put my dog tag inside. And my wristwatch for my older boy. I wish I had something for the younger one. Well, now that we've disposed of the tears, any time, mademoiselle... Oh. Didn't you hear the buzzer? Uh, yeah, I, I was... Brian, coming. who is this man? He, he was... What's the matter with you? Who is he? Answer. He's a waiter. What waiter? A uh, waiter, sir. Well, we always had a waiter. My name is Davos. I'm off station. I thought he was killed. Only buried alive, sir. When I came to, it seemed as if the whole hotel was on top of me. Yes, sir, but look at him. Look at his eyes. He, he is so sick, it sir. It took me eight hours to dig myself out. So you're Paul Davos? Yes, sir. Come with me. Me, sir? Yes, you're Davos. We'll have a little chat downstairs. Yes, sir. Stop here a moment. Yes, sir. You know, I'd almost believe you were a waiter. Uh, I am a waiter. Oh, the special kind, eh? You play your part well. Come along. The field marshal will wish to speak to you. To me? Of course, to you. Who else? He's looking in the lobby now. Remember to address him as your excellency. Oh, you Understand? Yes, sir. 
This is to the Führer. Ja, killen Sie. My Führer. I have today crossed the Egyptian border. I am now marching on toward Alexandria and Cairo. Then I will take the Suez Canal. Nothing can save the 8th British Army from a colossal catastrophe. They say the Red Sea once opened by special arrangement with Moses. A similar mishap will not occur this time. I pledge you herewith my word as a soldier. Signed, Feldmarschall Erwin Rommel. Your Excellency. What is it? Your Excellency, this man is Paul Davos. Davos, eh? Well, Davos, why in the name of the devil didn't you get proper information to us about the British withdrawal? Why? They told me in Berlin you were a competent man. Is that competent? Well, Your Excellency... Mr. Field Marshal's permission. It's been buried in the cellar ever since last night. He couldn't very well have used the laundry communication. Ah. The Field Marshal will find he has a good record as an advance man. We used him as a waiter in Danzig, in Rotterdam, and in Athens. Cognac. Yes, Your Excellency. Of course, no one in this so-called hotel has the slightest suspicion that you have been working for us. No, Your Excellency. You will continue here as a waiter until we can get you through your new assignment. Yes, Your Excellency. Cairo. Thank you, Your Excellency. I rather like to think of myself as the vulture who flies ahead of the Stukas, limping a little. Rather well said. Three glasses. Yes, Your Excellency. I suppose you'll be glad to escape from this sand trap. I will indeed, Your Excellency. How do you find the British Intelligence Service? Not very intelligent. Not an inkling about Professor Kronstadter? I beg your pardon, Your Excellency? Professor Kronstadter, the five graves. Oh, oh, of course. No, no, Your Excellency, not an inkling. <laughs> well, we shall take that big fat cigar out of Mr. Churchill's mouth and make him say Heil five times. Rather well said, Your Excellency. Cognac. Who is that singing? General Sebastiano, Your Excellency. Italian opera. I have always despised it. Yes, Your Excellency. You will drink with us, Tabor. Be kind to victory. To victory. To victory. Avanti! Yes? General Sebastiano, I've come with a request. Yes? What the request? A request that the general cease singing. Who made such a request? The gentleman of the German staff. I'll tell the gentleman from the German Among staff. Among them, Field Marshal Rommel. Oh, oh, very well. But I ask you, can a nation that belches understand the nation that sings? Oh, no, General. I'm getting very sick of these Germans pushing Italian soldiers into the front lines without letting their general in on their staff meetings. They steal the food packages my family sent me. They are censoring my letters. In fact, as we say in Milano, we are getting the short end of the stick. I have even been given a bathroom that does not work. Why? Because it was assigned to you, General Sebastiano. Is there no proper bathroom in this hotel? Yes, sir. I will have it. It belongs to the field marshal. Hmm, another kick in the face. They let us die, but they don't let us wash. Well, what did we expect? As we say in Milano, when you lie down with dogs, you wake up with fleas. Uh, right, sir. Wait! You... You haven't heard anything, do you understand? Of course not. From so far away, how can I hear what they say in Milano? Good. I can fill the general's wash basin in the morning if he wishes. Please. My orderly is in the hospital with measles. German measles. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> Good night, sir. Come in here. What is it? The key. Lock the door. What do you want, Sally? Look. I found his papers. Davos's papers. He has three passports, see? A Danish, a Swiss one, a Romanian. Let me see how I look. <laughs> what a kindly face. I'd never suspect myself. Now, how was I to know he was working with the Germans glove in glove? He came here two years ago. He said he wanted a job here on account of his lungs. He had what you call 
Uh, you know B.T. Uh... What do you know about Professor Kronstadter? Professor Kronstadter. Oh, yes, yes. I, I think I know that name. Yes? Or do I? Uh, maybe I don't. Well, what about Graves? Five Graves. Oh, Graves. Who's Graves? All right. What did Davos have to do with the laundry? With the laundry? Nothing, sir. Nothing at all. Get me in. Moosh. Come in quickly. Moosh knew him better than I did, didn't you, Moosh? Who? Davos? What of it? We were talking about the laundry here. Where does Davos come in? I do the laundry. All alone? Sometimes he helps me put it out to dry. Flat on the sand, perhaps? Bed sheets, towels, washcloths, all nicely spread out for the Messerschmitt? What Messerschmitt? Well, it's my guess, mademoiselle, as you've been washing some sort of alphabet. A towel could be a dash, a washcloth, a dot. Or don't you see, a sheet could mean 10,000 men or a towel petrol tank coming through. You suspected nothing? No. Bed sheet and a dash and... Say that slower, please. It's perfectly simple. The Germans were smart again, and the British were stupid. Why not call us naive, mademoiselle? We use sheets just to sleep on and towels for driving hands. Your hands will need a lot of towels. Shh, Moosh, please, why fight? He will not be here long. He, he's going away, aren't you, sir? No, I'm not. Huh? But, sir, I heard it with my own ears from the kitchen. They're letting you through the lines. They're sending you to Cairo, sir. You will be safe. Oh, yes, of course. I limp into British headquarters in Cairo with this club foot of mine. And where have you been, Corporal Bramble? Oh, nowhere in particular. I spent a day or two with Rommel. Rommel? Field Marshal Rommel, sir. You mean to say you were under the same roof with Rommel? Yes, sir. As close as I am to you? That's right, sir. And? And what, sir? You didn't leave him with a bullet in his head and his head in a puddle of blood? Sir, sir. Oh, he's talking so fast again. He's talking foolish. Perhaps. Corporal John J. Bramble, formerly with the Four Square Insurance Company, clerk in the claims department. Always rather afraid of the manager. Out of 120,000 men in the army of the Nile, that it should be this J. J. Bramble. It does sound foolish. Oh, I'm scared. I'm all scared inside. Well, what do you think I am? Just that I happen to have drawn the black ball. But we have not drawn it. Side and I. Oh, no, 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 no. We haven't. And we saved your life, didn't we, Moosh? I heard a wife crying and two little boys. And some words came out of my mouth. And I'm very grateful. But you won't be involved, like either of you. I'll work it out. You will work it out. In the morning, His Excellency will ring for breakfast. Room number five, black coffee and bed, he told me. No one else in the room. I will have my revolver beneath a napkin. It happened very quickly. Perhaps as he drops in his second lump of sugar. So that is all you want? Yes. Because it's good for England. Oh, I don't imagine it will win the war. It'll knock the breath out of them for a while. Well, you are not going to do it. Because it does not fit in with my plans, understand? What plan? Why do you think I stay down here in this filthy place? I was waiting for them, understand? No, I don't understand. Because I want to do business with them. Business? I see. Well, that's not very attractive, mademoiselle. What you think of me, I don't care of that. I advise you to postpone your business, mademoiselle. Mine is much more important. You'll stay in this room tonight. I'll sleep here in the chair. When room number five rings in the morning, remember, I take in the breakfast. Do we understand each other? Good. Central Cone, Ann Baxter, Otto Preminger, J. Carol Nash, and Fortunio Bonanova... We'll return in a moment in Act Two of Five Graves to Cairo. But first, Mr. DeMille has a word. I want to step out of character for a moment and tell you about a drama in real life. A drama of medicine in which sulfur drugs and tannic acid, insulin and opiates are saving lives every day on our battlefront. You can have a part in that drama simply by saving used fat. Undramatic, unimportant, hmm. The Office of Price Administration thinks it's so important that beginning today, you will receive two extra brown ration stamps, the kind that buy meat, butter, and cheese. For every pound of used fat, you turn into your butcher. And take them proudly. It's your government's way of saying thank you for this important war work. How do you go about saving fat? Well, kitchens are something of a mystery to me, so... I'll let a housewife tell you in her own words. There isn't much mystery about saving fat, Mr. DeMille. 
simply start with a tin can. Any size will do. Please don't use cardboard or glass. They may tear or break. Every time you have any drippings you can't use in cooking, pour them into your tin. You may have grease left over from bacon or sausage or fat you've skimmed from stews and soup. Pour it into the can and keep it in the ice box so it will stay solid. Don't throw away any of the blackened grease in your roaster or frying pan. It contains pure glycerin, just what the government needs. When the can is full, take it to your butcher. He will pay you at the rate of four cents and two brown ration stamps for each pound. Yes, friends, it's as easy as that. But it's one of the most important war jobs you'll be called on to do this winter. Because we need 250 million pounds of used fat from the kitchens of America in 1944. Won't you do your share? Every tablespoonful counts in helping to save the lives of our men at the front. We pause now for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. Five Graves to Cairo, starring Francho Tone as Corporal Bramble and Ann Baxter as Moosh, with Otto Preminger as Marshal Rommel and J. Carol Nash as Farid, and Fortunio Bonanova as General Sebastiano. In a little room just off the kitchen, Moosh and the British Corporal wait the summons from the German Field Marshal. The girl is quiet. A dark, silent shadow in the far corner. They're calling for you, mademoiselle. Room number three. Farid is looking out for it. Well, Farid won't do, obviously. They say Rommel keeps his Africa Corps in hothouses before he sends them out to the desert. Must be quite some time since they've heard a woman's voice. Oh, mademoiselle, I think this is the time for an additional bit of information. I lied to you. I had to say something quick and effective to soften your heart. I haven't any children, I haven't any wife, I've never been married. Really? Can you forgive me? Thank you. Ah, here's a request from the Italian general. How about the Italian general? Not the Italian general. How about the major with the monocle? Not the major with the monocle. Who are you waiting for, mademoiselle? Number five. <laughs> Good night, mademoiselle. Good night. <laughs> Five. You slept very soundly, monsieur. Hey, wait. Where are you going? To our ferry. Moose, wait. What? Moose, where? Where's my gun? I took it from you, monsieur. I said you slept soundly. Come back here, Moose. Good morning, Your Excellency. Where's the waiter? I am quicker on my feet. Put the tray on my lap. Sugar, your Excellency? I don't like women in the morning. Go away. Don't you understand English? Go away, I said. No. No, your Excellency. I stayed on while you searched for bombs. I could have run away. I waited for the German troops. I waited for your Excellency. Why? I wanted to talk to your Excellency. One piece of sugar. Yes, your Excellency. Two steps back, please. Now, what do you wish to say? It's about my brother, Your Excellency. He's in Germany. Continue. I had two brothers. One was taken prisoner. He's in a concentration camp in Wiesenberg. The other was killed. Fighting the Germans? They were just boys. Their classes were called. They had to go. They didn't hate the Germans or anybody. Of course, nobody hates the Germans. Proceed. What I wanted. I know that. One word from you, Your Excellency. He was wounded. He's lost one arm. He can't even work for you. He's useless. Maybe I'm not. If there's anything I can do... You are suggesting some sort of a bargain, hmm? This is a familiar scene, reminiscent of bad melodrama. Although usually it is not the brother for whose life the heroine comes to plead, 
It's the lover. The time is midnight. Place the tent of the conquering general. Blushingly, the lady makes a proposal, and gallantly, the general grants her wish. Later, the lady very stupidly takes poison. In one Italian opera, the two even go so far as to sing a duet. Schwegler! If I had any tears left, maybe you'd listen. There will be no duet today. Schwegler! Take this woman out of my room. He's not any enemy of yours. He's only 19 now, a boy. And he's dying. Petitions for the release of prisoners must be addressed to the command of the prison camp. They must be submitted in triplicate. You can have the Red Cross right, and then they are the Quakers. But everything must be in triplicate. We can use paper in Germany, a great deal of paper. Take her out. Yes, Your Excellency. You have to keep out of this room from now on. Yes. Who do you think you ought to open your mouth to him? Are you crazy? You get a little crazy if you think about something all the time for a long, long time. It is so stupid. I will ask a very big man for a very small favor. Sometimes uh, a lieutenant can be of more use. Or are you still afraid of lieutenant? No. I know people in Berlin who can pull some wires. I will meet you tonight and we will talk. Thank you. Lieutenant Feigler. Yes? The Major is waiting for you in the lobby. We have just brought in five prisoners. British officers. You must not go down there. You hear? Oh, it's all right. They're not from my outfit. They'll never recognize me. It is not that. They were stationed here once. Colonel Fitzhume lived in the hotel. Oh. He knew Davos. Go back to your room. Stay there. Oh, all right. It's... Donald! Uh-oh. Yes, sir? When is it downstairs? We'll oh. serve drinks for the officers. Yes. At once. Yes, sir, at once. May I serve you something, sir? Our friends, the British Davos. Oh, yes, yes sir. Is that Davos? Oh, Davos. It seems I neglected to tip you when I was here before. Why, you. That's quite all right, Colonel Fitzhume. I, I really didn't expect you to remember me, sir. Oh. What will it be, Colonel? Cognac? Sherry? Whiskey? Uh, whiskey for me and a little soda. The whiskey's over here, sir. Will you help yourself, Colonel? Thanks. Who are you? Intelligence? No, sir. Bramble. Royal Tanks just uh, happened in on this, so to speak. Where is Davos? Davos is dead. He was a German agent. Go on. I have a plan, sir. What plan? If I can get hold of a gun somewhere and then get Rommel alone. No, none of that. Why not? Isn't it sporting to shoot a sitting field marshal? Dead field marshals tell no secrets. What secrets, sir? You have their confidence. You have your freedom. There's a bigger job. Yes, sir. Stand by. And no ill-considered heroics, understand? That's orders. Yes, sir. Gentlemen, the field marshal requests the honor of your company at luncheon. Coffee ready? Cream? Sugar? Where's the sugar? Pride is getting it down in the cellar. I'm disappointed in you, Moose. Having set out for a field marshal, I didn't expect you to settle for a lieutenant. What is it to you? Well, now that you're down to lieutenants, how about a corporal? Let me remind you, this foot of mine's only camouflage. Eight coffee. Oh, well, obviously I'm in the wrong army. You are. If the circumstances in which we find ourselves weren't so peculiar, I might turn you over my knee and spank you with abandon. Thank you for your interest, but I'm getting what I want, so shut up. That's a very agreeable mouth you're casting before these swine. Moosh. Moosh, I have seen him all. What's the matter, Harry? I have seen him. Who? Davos in the cellar, his hands stretched out like this, all yellow, with the fingernails white. Davos. I thought he was way down under everything. Me too, but but when I climbed over for the sugar, the wreckage started giving away like apples. And there he was, all yellow, and the fingers, oh. Quiet. What did you do? I piled all the rubble over him more and more. Herr Davos could have been more cooperative and died further away. I'd better get the coffee in there. Yes. And you'd better give Farid a large cup, too. Later, we can find more suitable arrangements for the gentleman in the cellar. Gentlemen? Gentlemen? 
I understand that not long ago when the question came up in the British Parliament as to who should be entrusted with the supreme command of the Allied forces in Africa, some members suggested my name. That's quite possible, Fils Marshal. The British sense of humor is unpredictable, you know. Humor, my dear Colonel Fitzhume, is founded on truth. But who are we to argue with the British Parliament? You are fast becoming a legendary figure. Yes, they say everything possible about me. That I'm a magician, a puller of rabbits out of hats, the man who can saw Africa in half. And the field marshal can, too. They also say that you entertain captured British officers by giving them lessons in the strategy. Better a lesson too late than no lesson at all. Two more salt cellars here. Salt, salt cellars. Gentlemen, I have before me North Africa, from Tripoli to Cairo, Elagaila, Benghazi, Sidi Barani, Alexandria, Cairo. Now, gentlemen, the subject being vast and my time brief, why don't you ask me what puzzles you most? Suppose I give you 20 questions. Well, that's uncommonly generous of you, Field Marshal. It certainly is. Now, what? Are you there? Yes, sir. Give me a brandy, will you? Yes, sir. All right. Who will start? Um, may I? Uh, how many men have you got in North Africa? Not as many as you. Well, gentlemen, if you count in the Italians... Nobody counts in or on the Italians. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Field Marshal, in uh, February, when we had you at Agadabia, we had an idea they sent your best troops to Russia. You gentlemen have six senses. We have only five. But we use them. We must rely on preparation. For instance, we knew the Dutch would open their dikes, so we started building rubber boats, 50,000 of them, as far back as 1935. What did you do in 1935? Took your wives on little pleasure trips, snapped their photographs, plucking Edelweiss in Switzerland. German wives found themselves being photographed on bridges across the Vistula, in the neighborhood of the fortifications of Brussels. Next question. Field Marshal, now that you've pushed ahead 500 miles, aren't your supply lines getting a little short? They are very short. And yet you expect to take Cairo? In six days. I have my reservations in Shepherd's Hotel. Without supplies, how can you do it? Yes. Field Marshal, how? I am speaking to the Britishers. Sorry, sorry. Gentlemen, it is not the supplies which reach us. It is we who reach the supplies. Is that clear? Uh, not quite. We don't depend entirely on our trucks shuttling between the front line and Tripoli. It's a little far and a little exposed. Supply planes are clumsy, easy prey for your spitfires. To safeguard ourselves against all eventualities, we prepare. Preparation, gentlemen. Preparation. Very interesting. In 1937, two years before this war started, we dug supplementary supplies into the sands of Egypt. A number of depots under your very noses. Thousands and thousands of gallons of petrol and water, ammunition, spare parts for our tanks, waiting for us. Under our very noses, eh? Where? Yeah. Where? Where? I gave you 20 questions, gentlemen. That is question 21. We gladly trade you uh, Rudolf Hess for the answer to 21. You may keep him. Gentlemen, my time is short. I hope you enjoyed your lunch. Davos? Is the gentleman's car ready? Yes, Your Excellency. Thank you, Davos. Davos? I'm afraid that tip will have to wait till after the war. Oh, don't worry, sir. You're a good man, Davos. I hope I know my job, sir. You do. I'm sure of it. Water, petrol, ammunition. What is it? You're looking for something? Yes, water, petrol, ammunition. Right here on the table? Between this spot and Cairo. You sure? Buried right under our noses. How could they do it? Who? How? Who? The Germans. You sick again, sir? Not a bit, thanks. But this is pepper and salt, fellas, sir. I know. 
And you are looking for water, petrol, ammunition? That's right. Well, how could it get in here? That's what I'd like to know. Oh, dear. Rommel on top of us, the man you are supposed to be dead underneath us, and you making riddles. I will put these things away. Clean off the table, please. Six days, he said. That means we'll be in Cairo Sunday. Perhaps. Hey! Hey, that name! Hmm? Here is that name. In the newspapers lining the drawer. What name? You you asked me about it, and, and I do not know you, remember? And here it is under the knives. For years I have been looking at it every time I put the knives away. What name? Professor Kronstadter. Let me see it. There's his picture. The German archaeologist, Professor Kronstadter. Sorry, you're a great man. Who, me? Archaeologist, of course. Oh, we get them all the time in Egypt, digging up the old mummy. London Press, February 17th, 1937. That's the year. What year? Preparation year. And just have a look at Professor Kronstetter. Who is it? Oh, yeah. <coughs> That's him. His Excellency Field Marshal Rommel. It's so simple. A highly respectable group of German scientists arrives in Egypt to dig for tombs between the Libyan border and Cairo. What a convenient way to send a military mission with full authority to dig, dig, dig. Only they didn't dig anything out. They dug everything in. What, sir? Water, petrol, ammunition. Oh, not again. Please, sir. Hurry. Now we know how. Yes, sir, yes. But we don't know where. There's still question 21. Is Davos here? Quiet. Yes. Here, sir. The field marshal wants to see you in his room. Come in, Davos. I have just received information that my advanced columns have reached Objective Y. Objective Y, Your Excellency? That's, that's good news, isn't it? Yes. Everything works out according to my plans. I wish I could have told it to those Britishers at luncheon. Their digestion would have stopped completely. If I may be permitted, Your Excellency gave them a very brilliant lecture. They will remember Field Marshal Rommel, or should I say, Professor Kronstetter? Thank you, Davos. For a moment, I was really afraid Your Excellency might put all the cards on the table and tell them about the five graves. My tongue did it. Such blind ignorance. I might have just as well shown them my map. With the exact location of the five graves? Come here, Davos. Yes, Your Excellency. Here is the map of Egypt. You, of course, know the answer. But would they have seen anything? Not a thing, Your Excellency. They have such complicated minds. They expect invisible ink. Maps that have to be warmed over fire, so held against the light to reveal secret pinpricks. Too simple for them, this. I'm trying to look at it with an Englishman's eyes. Not a clue, just an ordinary map. There's nothing here that could give them a hint. Is there? After I have taken Cairo, I shall send a postcard to number 10 Downing Street with the correct solution. Now, boss, all arrangements have been made for you. Yes, Your Excellency. You are leaving for Cairo this evening. You'll be taken by motorcycle to El Daba. From there, the guys will get you through the British lines. This evening? Nine o'clock. That, that gives me six hours. For what? Oh, some things here. Unfinished business of no importance. You can expect me on Sunday afternoon. We won't have any difficulty with objectives P or T, I'm sure. P or T, Your Excellency. It seems improbable. Have a lukewarm bath drawn for me in the Shepherd's Hotel in Cairo. The Royal Suite. In the evening, a command performance of the opera. Aida, in German. Omitting the second act, of course. It is too long and not too good. That will be all, Davos. Yes, Your Excellency. Come in? Yes. What time is it, Moosh? Half past six. I hear you are leaving. That's right. Moosh, if there were a local florist, I'd offer you an armful of white lilacs with my humblest apologies. For what? I had an unpleasant idea about you, Moosh. Farid cleared it up. He told me about your brother. I'm sorry. It's all right. Well, now, let's see. Port Said? No, that's too far east. What are you doing? What is that book? The Tourist Guide. You know, Moosh, I not only have a club foot, I have a club brain. TP and Objective Y, does that mean anything to you? TP and Y? 
Not a thing. Tell you, it was maddening, Moose. There was Rommel's map staring at me with everything in it. Eyes have I, but I see not. T-P-Y. What's the key? Where's the answer? Say, that's a pretty dress. In Cairo, I worked on Sunday. Drifting down the Sharia Ibrahim Pasha with a white parasol over your shoulder. There was a parasol that went with the dress. Where is it? In the shop. I could never quite afford it. The hand was real ivory. Maybe someday when I'm rich. Why? Why? Listen, either you stop talking like out of the soup or you tell me. I've gone through this thing writing down the name of every village, every oasis, every landmark that begins with P or T. There are dozens of them, but there isn't a Y in Egypt. Hecky, what have I said? Moose. That's it, Moose. That's it. What is it? Did you hear what I said? I said there isn't a Y in Egypt, but there is. There's Y and P and T. I've got it. E-G-Y-P-T, the five graves. What five graves? The five supply depots of Professor Rummel. Of course, no invisible ink, just a map of Egypt and printed across it, Egypt. And the letters, don't you see? Every letter marking a supply depot. Invisible because they're so visible all over the map. Just a moment. Since when was, was Rommel a professor? I must see that map again. I must get back into his room. Whose room? Rommel's. No, please don't. You've had such luck so far. You can leave. You're safe. Why risk your neck again? What for? Thank you, Moose. Before, you took pity on the neck of a married man. This time, you know, it's just my neck. Where's that agreeable mouth of yours? Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot. Wrong army. Well, I've got to get those mats. Wait. They'll kill you. We'll see. Goodbye, Moose. Now, before Mr. DeMille presents Crancho Tone, Ann Baxter, Otto Preminger, J. Carol Nash, and Fortunio Bononova in Act Three of Five Graves to Cairo, there's a thought I'd like to share with you. I read this about our soldiers. Only 50% of our Army's time, only 50% is spent in actual fighting. So, even our soldiers spend a lot of their time doing the unexciting things nobody hears about. Plain chores. Well, I'm afraid that's the way some women feel about keeping house. There are beds to be made every day. Cleaning and dusting. Cooking. And dishwashing. Chores, yes. But a lot depends on how you do them. A successful businesswoman once told me about her first job. She spent every day filing cards, all day long. It was so boring I could have screamed, she said. So every day I set myself to memorize a poem while I worked. Something that made the day seem beautiful. How about that for an idea while you're washing dishes? Next, make jobs like dishwashing as pleasant as they can be. Pour Lux Flakes into the dishpan. Turn on the water. See the rich, lively suds bubble up. That's a pleasure in itself. No slowpoke suds. No gray, greasy dishwater. Best of all, when you finish that dishpan job, your hands will be as soft, smooth, and lovely as when you started. Changing the Lux takes away the red, coarse look a strong soap leaves. Scores of women found changing to Lux Flakes made their hands look nicer in just a few days. Use all the Lux you need to get good suds, but no more than you need. A little Lux goes a long way. It's really thrifty. Why not try the Lux way of doing dishes tomorrow? Now, our producer, Mr. DeMille. After the play, we'll get some news on the offstage doings of our stars. Now the curtain rises on the third act of Five Graves to Cairo. Starring Francho Tone and Ann Baxter, with Otto Preminger, J. Carol Nash, and Fortunio Bonanova. In the field marshal's quarters, the British soldier bends low over the map of Egypt. E G Y P T. Each letter marking a supply depot for the Africa German Africa Corps. But now the sky overhead roars with planes. British planes. Returning to bomb Sidi al fire. You, what are you doing in here? Well, the, the map, Lieutenant. I thought the field marshal's map should not be left behind. You did, they Very conscientious. Thank you, sir. Go on, get down the cellar. Yes, sir. Yes, Lieutenant. 
Tell me something, Doubles. When we arrived here, I understood you had been bombed into the cellar. Is that correct, Doubles? Yes. This cellar, Doubles? Yes, Lieutenant. And you dug yourself out, Doubles? That's right, Lieutenant. You are sure, Doubles? Quite sure. You're sure you are not dead, Doubles? Come here. Over here, under Sugar Bell. Isn't it strange, Doubles? It seems to be the body of a man with yellow fingers and a club foot. Yes, so it is. Uh, here, here, come here. Yes, I feel. Who is it? Hmm? Come in. Hurry. Why did you lock the door? Now sit down there and listen to me. You better go. Sit down. Go, please. Lieutenant Schwegler is coming Schwegler here. Lieutenant Schwegler begs to be excused. He's dead. No dead. screaming, please. He was shot. You killed him? Yes. Unfortunately, he ran across the lake, Mr. Davos. Fortunately, no one knows about it yet. They mustn't till tomorrow morning. Farid has full instructions. The body will be found on below in the sand outside this window. There'll be my waiter's jacket and my shirt with some blood on it. Enough to prove I did it. Farid and you will work together. Farid and I. That's right. I need six hours to get through the German line. Why did you kill him? I said no screaming. Why? I'll tell you why. Because a little piece of paper has to get through to British headquarters, see? Just a piece of paper with some pencil marks on it. E-G-Y-P-T. That's why Farid and you must cover up till I get there. Is that clear? Perfectly. I've killed two people. You have killed him and my brother. His only chance to get out alive. And now all you ask is that we cover up so you can get back to the bushes. Is that it? Like Dunkirk again? Well, what about Dunkirk? Yes, some were left behind. French, Polish, Belgian, and English. Some. They had to be if the rest were to carry on. Carry on for what? Are there not enough dead already? Oh, yes, there are a lot of dead, Moose. In Tobruk, I saw them piled up at a hundred. In Sevastopol, they lay ten deep. They were blown to bits in the repulse from the Prince of Wales. In Athens, they're dying of starvation, 400 a day. For what, Moosh? So that somebody like you can hold out a tin cup to a victorious lieutenant begging for a, for a penny's worth of pity? It's not one brother that matters. It's a million brothers. It's not just one prison gate they might sneak open for you. It's all their gates that must go. All right. Talk. You talk such big words. You have a million brothers. I'm small. I have only one. And I want him to live if it costs a piece of paper. I will see the field marshal himself. So eine verfluchte Schweinerei. Das ist ja unerhört. Mate, come here. Your Excellency. Be quiet. This concerns your brother. You remember I advised you? To approach this case through the Red Cross of the Quakers. You thought it wiser to approach it through a certain lieutenant. Did you? Well, I have just found out that this certain lieutenant has shown you some telegrams. Telegrams that were sent to Berlin and telegrams that were received from Berlin. They were never sent. They were never received. They are forgeries. Oh, no. We will wait for the certain lieutenant. I prefer to have him present. Your Excellency. Where is Schwegler? You have found him here. He's dead, Your Excellency. He was shot twice. I see. Self-defense, of course. Hey, mate? Speak up. Why did you do it? Because I thought I could make a bargain with him. Because he lied to me. Because he was dead. Because he was one of you. First, you made him forget that he was a German officer. Then you killed him because he was one. He was only 23. At 20, he was decorated in Poland for conspicuous gallantry in action. At 21, he was commanding a tank company. Best aid I ever had. A German officer with a brilliant future. Yes. He might have become a field marshal with somebody on her knees before him. Two steps back, please. Schwein! Well, what is it, Abos? Oh, your spy wants to speak. I will say what there is to say. I knew you were for him all these years, Davos. Get out of here, Davos. Get out. What is it, Davos? Get out! If your excellency has no further orders, I'm about to leave for Cairo. Nothing, Davos. Good luck. Yes, good luck, 
Davos. Thank you. Sorry, come here. Yes? Tomorrow morning, give them the proof that Davos did it. Understand? Uh-huh. And will you say to her for me, God bless you. There's objective E.G. and Y, sir. They've used E and T already. Yes. Well, I doubt if they'll ever use Y. Or objective P. Or objective T. The English 8th Army under General Montgomery is still pursuing the Africa Corps. From El Alamein, they have pounded their way eastward step by step. Then Gassi has been reoccupied in Sidi Barani. And today, the British forces entered Sidi Hellfire. <laughs> Come on, you ideas. Keep moving. Hey, soldiers. Who are these men? Italian prisoners. Millions of them. Keep moving, boys. Well, hello, General Sebastiano. What? You know me? That's right. As we say in Milano, it's a wise man that drops the short end of a stick, huh? Who are you? Well, soon you can lie in your tub and get rid of the fleas. What fleas? The ones you caught from lying down with the dogs, as we say in Milano. <laughs> <laughs> now I remember. Uh, Hello. Arrivederci. Arrivederci. Laurora di Bianco del Sita. Hurry. You have come back. Oh, it is good to have you here again, sir. What happened? Where's Moose? Well, uh, uh, maybe you would like to have number five this time with the good bathroom. Now, where is she? Tell me. There was a trial that morning. I brought in the evidence, as you told me. And they, they found her innocent of shooting Schwegler. Well? But they found her guilty of spreading enemy rumors. She kept on screaming in his the British will be back. The British will be back. They beat her and beat her. And then they led her out. One bullet would have been enough. Where is she? Out there on the desert. I put her with the other soldiers. Show me, Sergeant. <laughs> There, sir. We buried her there. Hello, Moose. Perhaps I should bend down so you can hear me better. I bought you that parasol, Moose, and the shop they swore it was real ivory. Let's hope so. It will give you some shade until we can tend to take you back where there are trees and leaves and rivers and dew on the grass. Don't worry, Moose. We're after them now. When you feel the earth shake, that'll be our tanks and our guns and our lorries, thousands and thousands of them, British, French, and American. We're after them now, coming from all sides. We're going to blast up blazes out of them. We're going to pound and pound till the earth shakes like a great bell. And it rings with a new song, a better song. Praise God. Just a moment, our stars will return for a curtain call. Listen. Did you count them? Ten. There are only ten more shopping days till Christmas. Ten days to get all the things you've put off till now. Well, fortunately, there's still time to get a gift the women on your list always appreciate. Lanyard. And if you choose just the right type slip or 90 for each person... It won't look like a last-minute selection at all. Try easy-to-pack rayon jersey for young army and navy wives living out of a suitcase. Oh, trimly tailored kinds for war workers or women in the armed services. Or more elaborate lacy styles for the brides, you know. And if you can, include a small box of Lux Flakes with your gift. Isn't that a good idea, Lily? Mm, yes. It's a gift of extra long wear for Christmas Sundays. We all want our nice things to stay lovely a long time these days. 
If your dealer is out of Lux Space, well, you might put your Lux into, into verse instead. More Lux is on the way, and it is worth waiting for. You can be sure it will come to the rescue of our undies and stockings very soon. Now, here's Mr. DeMille with our stars. From five graves to Cairo, it's only five steps to the footlights and a curtain call for Frank Tone and Ann Baxter. Thank you, C.B. You know, you're one of my favorite hosts. Now, since you're one of Hollywood's newest fathers, Sancho, I, I guess the first question should be, how's your new son? Probably one of the handsomest men in Hollywood, C.B. <laughs> fathers always take the credit and mothers do all the work. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I built the baby's crib. <laughs> Good job. He likes it. <laughs> I didn't know you designed furniture for a hobby, Sancho. My grandfather has a hobby something like that. He designed buildings. Well, you've heard of him, Mr. DeMille. Frank Lloyd Wright? And even if he is your grandfather, one of the world's most famous architects might resent your calling his art a hobby. By the way, what's yours? Cooking. <laughs> if I hadn't been happily married for more than 40 years, I'd make an offer right at this point. I, I mean, of course, uh, have you got a favorite recipe? Yes, herb omelette. I'm quite proud of it. I imagine the ladies are already getting out pencil and paper. I'm sorry, but I can't give the recipe. I kind of make it up as I go along and never do it twice the same. That's the fun in cooking. You mean you never use a cookbook? Oh, yes. I collect them to read, but I don't always do what they say. Well, C.B., maybe you'd better give us a recipe for next week's play. Now, uh, mix carefully equal parts of music, comedy, and romance. And the result is the paramount hit Dixie. And the stars, well, who else but Bing Crosby and Dorothy L'Amour? It's the story of the first minstrel man, Dan Emmett, who gave us the great song hit called Dixie. Bing will sing that tune and the other big hits of the picture. So don't miss Dixie next Monday night. I wouldn't miss it for anything, Mr. DeMille. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. And we'll hope soon to say goodbye to Marshall Rommel. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Flakes, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents Bing Crosby and Dorothy L'Amour in Dixie with Barry Sullivan. The success will be the mill saying good night to you from Hollywood. Five Graves to Cairo was presented through the cooperation of Paramount Pictures, whose current release is the Technicolor production, Riding High. Ann Baxter will soon be seen in the 20th Century Fox picture, The Sullivan, and in the same studio's production of the Maxwell Anderson play, The Eve of St. Mark. Otto Preminger will produce and direct the 20th Century Fox picture, I Married a Soldier. J. Carroll Nash is currently seen in the Columbia picture, Sahara. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Christmas seal time again. Put Christmas seals on all your letters and packages during the holiday season. Because every Christmas seal you buy helps to fight against tuberculosis. Heard in tonight's play were Fred Mackay as Schwegler, Edward Harvey as Fitzhume, and Charles Steele, Ed Emerson, Dennis Green, Norman Field, and Vernon Steele. Our music was directed by Louis Silvers. This program is broadcast to our fighting forces overseas by international shortwave radio in cooperation with the Armed Forces Radio Service. This is your announcer, John M. Kennedy, reminding you to tune in again next Monday night to hear Bing Crosby and Dorothy L'Amour in Dixie with Barry Sullivan. <laughs>